The more I look into Rimuru's ever-expanding list of abilities, the more convinced I become that he's actually the strongest isekai protagonist to ever exist. I mean, we're not even at the point where he's become a demon lord yet, and still half his powers are already approaching the status of godlike. Especially some of the ones that we're going to be looking at next. So, let's finish up this three-part profile on Rimuru's power and take a look at the rest of his insane arsenal of skills before his evolution into a demon lord. But before I talk about Rimuru, there's another character who's just as OP that I want to quickly talk about first. And that's because this video is sponsored by Tapitoon. If you've ever wanted to read one of the greatest power fantasies ever created, then this would definitely be the best place to do it. I mean, as someone who's been reading solo leveling since Season 1, I can 100% confirm that if you like Tensida, then you're gonna like this. Not only are both main characters extremely overpowered, but there's also that recurring element of enemies underestimating our protagonist then proceeding to get stomped. Plus, with a world that carries quite a bit of depth to it, as well as a level of power scaling that has the potential to exceed even Tensidus, this really is one of the best webcomics to get started with. So, if you're someone who's ever been interested, then go ahead and use the link in the description to start reading solo leveling today. Not only is Tapitoon a great place to access it legally, but it's also a great way to directly support the webcomics creator. You'll also be able to find all the latest chapters for hundreds of other webcomics, as well as professional translations in English, French, and German. So, once again, a huge thanks to Tapitoon for sponsoring this video. Since we ended part 2 with the unique skill Degenerate, we can now look at the rest of the skills that Rimuru had gained from Ifrit. Remember, the first was the clone-making replication that we had talked about last video, a fairly straightforward ability that doesn't change much throughout the series. As for the other two though, well, these didn't last long in their original state due to the synthesis effects of Degenerate. Less than a day had passed before these skills had merged and become something far more powerful. But before we can look at what they had become, we first need to understand what they were before. That way you'll have a better understanding of the foundations of these more evolved skills. So, with regards to combustion, this was a skill that turned the user's own body into flames. It would use the caster's personal corpus as a source for magical energy, then proceed to transform said energy into fire. Because the body was the fuel that brought these flames to life though, that meant that it couldn't be activated if the user possessed a physical body. It made it so that Rimuru's slime form was completely incapable of casting it. What he needed instead was a different type of body that was either spiritual or magical in nature. Only then would he be able to supply the fuel that was necessary to support the skill's activation. So, when Rimuru had tested this, he found that turning into Ifrit allowed combustion to feed off his spiritual energy. Everything except for his core became flames that exceeded temperatures of 1200 degrees Celsius. The fact that his core didn't ignite though was an interesting side effect that indicated the possibility of partial combustion. You see, if Rimuru turned himself human then only made certain body parts magical in nature, those specific parts would be the only areas capable of transforming into flames. It was a unique property that gave him immense control over an attack that could do quite a bit of significant damage. That said, there was one major downside to its usage, and that was the copious amounts of energy required to keep it going. When Rimuru was experimenting, he found that activating combustion without any sort of conservation mechanism would result in an almost immediate loss of all his magic. With the skill constantly converting magicules in order to maintain its heat, that meant that a constant outflow of magical energy was needed from its body. It was a massive portion that he knew would deplete his entire supply in only a matter of seconds. If there was a way to maintain that heat without magicules though, then that would allow the skill to stay active for significantly longer. So, this was where Ifrit's other skill came in. By using ranged barrier to lock that heat within what's essentially a closed system, Rimuru would only need enough magicules to activate combustion any additional magical energy would no longer be needed since the heat from the flames wouldn't be dissipating into the air anymore. It was a technique that pretty much defied the laws of thermodynamics. In any case, this was just the beginning of all the different uses Rimuru had come up with for this barrier skill. As an ability that allowed him to create any size or form of barrier within 100 meters of himself, the practical applications of it were almost endless, especially since he could use its energy conservation effects to combine it with a number of other skills. For example, if Rimuru was to shoot a projectile like Water Blade through his own barrier, the projectile would as a result get wrapped in its own mini barrier. Not only would this make the attack a lot more durable, but it would also travel a much further distance as well. 
If Rimuru was to combine it with something else like Ifrit's Flare Circle, then anything within the barrier would be instantly scorched to ashes. The oxygen would burn into nothing, and eventually this hellish prison would reach temperatures approaching that of the suns. So, needless to say, ranged barrier was extremely useful for both defense and offense. But anyway, now that we know about the rest of the skills that Rimuru had gained from Ifrit, we can now continue with what they had become from Degenerate. Remember, Shizue's Degenerate brought with it a whole new frontier of possibilities in the form of synthesis, an effect that allowed for the merging of skills in a way that often evolved them or made them better. So, one of the first things that Rimuru had used this effect on was actually the other skill that he'd gained from Shizue, an extra skill that granted partial control over the element of fire. It wasn't like he could shoot fireballs from the palm of his hands, but he could increase his body temperature in a way that produced basic flames. Considering how they paled in comparison to Shizue's though, Rimuru began to imagine that she had infused hers with magic. It was a train of thought that led him to try something similar. Like, what would happen if he used combustion to create the flames first, then tried to transfer control over to fire manipulation after? Well, given that Great Sage was monitoring this thought process, the end result was an optimal combination of mimicry from Predator, combustion from Ifrit, and fire manipulation from Shizue, all of which had merged together to create the new extra skills Dark Flame and Molecular Manipulation. So, in exchange for combustion, fire manipulation, and water manipulation, Rimuru had gained more evolved versions that could do pretty much the exact same thing, plus a whole lot more. Dark Flame created a field of magic in which high-intensity fire could be created from literally anywhere within it. So long as there was enough internal magic force being focused, the flame would manifest itself wherever Rimuru wanted. As for molecular manipulation, well, this was a little more complex to the point that even Rimuru didn't understand it. He did understand that it gave him the ability to control particles in the air, but he couldn't fully comprehend as to how he did it. From what Great Sage had mentioned, the process involved using the magicules around him to freely control the paths of other molecules. So, this could be something as simple as creating friction to increase the temperature, or something as complex as colliding specific particles to create big explosions. Regardless, it's best to think of it like a form of telekinesis that worked on any and all sorts of molecules. That being the case, this would go on to serve as the basis for the evolution of Rimuru's Dark Lightning skill. By combining Dark Lightning with Molecular Manipulation, Rimuru was able to create the new extra skill Dark Thunder, an ability that granted access to the Dark Lightning-type skills, all without the need for a Tempest or Star Wolf body. So, rather than having to transform in order to cast Dark Lightning like how he usually did, instead he could now use it in whatever form he wanted. Not only that, but he could also use Magicules to freely adjust its size and force as well. All it took was a little help from molecular manipulation, and controlling this lightning was now as easy as it was to control fire and water. It was a level of power over the elements that was damn near approaching the status of godlike. Now, one last thing that Rimuru had gained from this first instance with Degenerate was an evolved version of Resist Temperature called Cancel Temperature. This practically nullified all negative effects from extreme temperatures at either ends of the spectrum, essentially making him immune to any sort of ice or fire-based attacks. If he was to take this resistance then link it with his ranged barrier from Ifrit, then the barrier itself would also become immune to those attacks as well. Do this one more time for all his other resistances, and the end result is a multi-layer barrier that possesses the same resistances that he does. He couldn't apply more than one resistance to a single barrier, but he could create multiple different barriers each linked to their own resistance. Thus why it's called a multi-layer barrier. So, in addition to absolute control over several elements and the molecules in the air, Rimuru had also gained a huge buff in his defenses that could be applied to literally anything, all of which had come from this single encounter with Shizue and Ifrit. Now, I may be skipping a little bit ahead here, but there was one other resistance that Rimuru had gained which was from the Orc Disaster Geld, a resistance to any and all attacks whose damage was based on rot or corrosion. The reason I'm saying this now is because this was yet another resistance that Rimuru liked to link with his barriers. It's an additional layer alongside the others for physical damage, temperature, and whatever else he has, each of which actually double his resistance effects when applied to him. Moving on, the next instance of Deviant's usage had come in the form of Universal Shapeshift. This was an extra skill that emerged when Predator's mimicry had combined with Deviant's synthesis and separation. As for what it did, well, it pretty much allowed Rimuru to become a Chimera. Rather than have to fully transform into another monster in order to use their skills, instead he could now just use Universal Shapeshift to do partial transformations. 
Any part of any monster could be replicated in a way that made pretty much every ability accessible. So this was a skill that granted a lot more flexibility when it came to combat. Something that was a little more focused around utility was the evolution of his ultrasonic wave skill. Remember, this was initially only used as a means to detect enemies and act as his voice. But it was after its enhancement into Sense Soundwave that this new skill had become something that could detect so much more. Whether it be the sounds and movements of those around him, or even the smells and temperatures of the local area, literally everything was now being picked up by him. It was a whole new world of information in which anything related to the nearby magicals could be perceived by him. After this, the next set of skills that Rimuru had gained had come from the defeat of Kribidus. It was a duo of skills in the form of gravity control and magic jamming, as well as a new resistance against any and all types of magic attacks. As you'd expect from a skill called magic jamming, this pretty much interfered with the natural properties of any magic kills within a 1000 foot radius. Not only making it extremely difficult to cast any sort of magic, but also completely nullifying the ability to use flight-based magic. It wasn't as if magic was impossible to use here, but the chaotic state of the magic kills made it very difficult to manipulate. So any person who wasn't extremely proficient in their ability to manipulate magic kills would find themselves struggling to cast even the most basic of spells. Then combine this with a multi-layer barrier linked to magic resist and you pretty much have a recipe for complete magical immunity. Switching over to control gravity now, this is the skill that allows Rimuru to float. Yes, he does have physical wings which makes flying just as easy, but control gravity bends the very laws of physics to the person using it. It's an extra skill that enables flight without the need for wings or magicules. I'm sure there's quite a few more uses for it than just that, but it's not really something that Rimuru has personally looked into. Now, the last two abilities that Rimuru had come across before becoming a demon lord was actually a new magic and skill that he'd gained from his adventurer Tustin Blumund. If you don't remember when this was, well, that's because it was never shown in the anime. The time when Rimuru had officially become an adventurer was completely bypassed. Fortunately, I do have a couple videos going over what we missed. So if you want to see what those last abilities are as well as how he got them, then I highly recommend giving those two videos a watch. There's plenty of other interesting information to be found there as well. But anyway, I think that's pretty much everything regarding Rimuru's power. Well, before his evolution to a demon lord anyway. So the next set of videos will start to cover the even more complex skills he gained as a demon lord. Plus a few other miscellaneous ones that sounded pretty interesting from the comments. Until then though, be sure to check out my other videos and leave a like or comment if you enjoyed it. Now, before I go, I want to give another huge thanks to TappyToon for sponsoring this video. With hundreds of professionally translated titles being readily available, as well as revenue going to support the creators, I definitely recommend using the link in the description to read awesome stories like Solo Leveling or Dungeon Reset. You can also gain access to new episodes at zero cost by simply using the Time Tool Free option or watching a couple of ads. If anything though, just give the first episode of Solo Leveling a try with the link in the description. I promise you won't be disappointed. But anyway, as always, thank you so much for watching, and if you enjoyed this type of anime content, then you already know what to do. So, until next time, ciao!